How about you? I'm Hank. Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. I got Jeff and David with me today. We're actually at Jeff's place taking out this engine on this 550 dozer. Just come up here, kind of give me an extra set of hands. Try not to get in the way too much, Jeff. <laughs> you know? But uh, so this, you're concerned about the number three piston? Is mm -hmm. that what it is? That's it. Yeah. So once we rip this thing out of here, they can rebuild it, and hopefully we can get some more footage of that. But today should be pretty simple. We'll take some uh, bolts out of the bell housing. Lift it out of here, and they got them. I told them, I said, once you get most of the work done, call me. I'll come over here. <laughs> I'll come over here, and I'll help you. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, but we're gonna get we're gonna get to it. Nothing like helping friends, you know. You need this uh, light under there. I'm just looking to see if there's an actual little bolt up under here, <laughs> and I'm not seeing nothing. Okay, there's not one on that. I'm looking right at it. And like right in here. That's what I'm looking. There's nothing there. Nothing there. Okay, well it's this one here and then the ones yep. up top. Yep, that's it. Is the only two. We're gonna go ahead and hook this crane up. You gonna put uh bolts to the head? Yeah, I got some uh hooks here. Get this in. This that I had made. Right here? Yeah, either one, it don't matter. Just Well, they are ain't gonna go there. This is what I've always used to pull these motors with. Now Jeff, you was telling me these are slip they've got sleeves in them, right? Yes, they do have sleeves. See them right there? Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can get this crane up a little bit further. May have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to slide the boom out. Yeah. Comes out. Oh, let's see. That's gonna be probably as about as far as we can go with that. I, I thought these tracks it would go in between these tracks. <laughs> it was just. It won't. The yeah, tracks are just, just too wide, ain't it? Yeah. Oh well. We'll just have to hook up and do the best we can. Single tree is going to use, but I can't hook it up with that. Is this, uh, do I need to double this chain up somehow? It probably would help shorten it some. Let's see. Let's see. Is there any particular other way you want to do it? I oh, yeah. uh, will. That's not very secure in there. I mean, that, that, that second loop is okay, but that, I don't know if I can get a third one. Yeah, well, we'll just have to pick it up and do the... Yeah. I had a... Okay. That one's tightening up already. Yeah. Here, let me back off a little and turn that chain where it's evened out. All right. Get her. Yeah, I think that'll 
Yeah, that'll work right there now. All right, let's get the bolts out on the side. Did you get a wrench, David? Or you now this is a, a, a 550, and it's a long. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if it's a, well, a long get the, track or not, but yeah, it's Dave's, out there on the uh, track back there. Jeff, what year do you think this, or what years is? It's a, a late 75, early 76. Yeah. It's a 27, 276 engine. Oh, that's the same I got my little. Yep, same one. Yeah. Always. So I'm pretty much an expert so, at it. So if yours goes missing, you know where it is. <laughs> that's right. Is there one on this side I need to get as well? Yeah, it's gonna be right there. Right. Oh yeah, I got you. You need this light over here. You got another uh, socket there, Jeff. I'll get this one. Yeah, right here. Just, can you get that with the? Probably. Need an extension or a. She's on there. This is gonna be like an eighth at a time, you know? Yeah. That's why they call them compact tractors. <clears throat> I keep hitting my key fob on my... We may have to have one, Hank, if we have to run it. I've got one that's three foot I got foot a long one, yeah. All right, we'll yeah. run it out the, the end. Right, let me put my keys up so I'll keep doing that. Using a uh, let's see if this one here is gonna be long enough to run it. There you go, I can see it, I can see it on there. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, it's super loose already. It is. Or is it on there? Or is it, or is it the right side? It, well, it may not be. I think it's a 15 16. What size is that, Dave? No, it's turning. 15, I can, yeah, I can, I can see it turning. Let me, let me look at here. But, I mean, this felt so doggone. It may be Lucy. No, it ain't on there. It ain't on there, Jeff. Come on with it. There you go. Yeah, it's loose. Super loose. There you go. It is loose. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Nice. There's no telling when you get into these things what's what. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> How many hours you got on this uh, before you had to rebuild the motor? Uh, this is the one I, I went and bought <clears throat> over toward Caraville. Right. And they had been sitting for uh, eight to ten years. Nice. They parked it, put a brand new undercarriage under it and parked it. And uh, we kind of went and rescued it. That's good. Yeah. And uh, it ran. Uh, we loaded it on the truck. And... You want this, Dan? Yeah, it might help. <laughs> you get me clicking. Yeah, that's also after it's set ten years or so. You you making money with it now? Yeah, it's a it's a good pushing strong tractor. Yeah. Uh, we just had this issue of a blow by in it yeah. and. Uh, we decided we'd pull around, tear it down, get it seen about, and that's what we found. All right. What's yeah. a, what kind of repair is this right here? Well, this is the tractor we call the Frankenstein uh -oh. because it's <laughs> somebody actually knocked a hole in the block. Yeah, yeah. And they put it back together, and it had a when we was running, it had a little leak there. Mm. So we decided to redo what they did. Uh, yeah. And and this is some uh, repair. We just got oil all over it, but. It's some repair work with some stuff that's better than they use it on pipelines. Oh, okay. Uh, so it ain't going nowhere. No, it's not going nowhere. Yeah. It, it's some hard, hard stuff. So.
So we're hoping that we've got it solved there if we can just get the rest of it fixed. Okay, you got that? Yeah. It's right here. Okay. Now we just need the two on the top? Watch your knuckles. Okay. That's another easy one. Yeah, they must not have had this thing bolted down too tight. There's that one. Right there. Okay. Right there. You got it? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get it. As long as I'm not doing it with my left hand. I can't. Yeah. All right, Ray. Let me let me put some pressure on. All right, Ray. Uh, Is that better? Yeah, let's try that. There you go. Is your hand loose? Yes, yeah, hand loose. Okay. No, that's the last bolt got in it, so. Alright. Alright, well, I need just a little more. Uh hold on, I'm on top. You got tape on here? Because this is about to be loose. I wonder why they Is it pin in? It's got pins going on on it. It's got dial pins. Uh, okay, so that's what's got it. Yeah, because it's about to come out right here. Yeah, we'll have to shake it loose. It's got dial pins on it. Once you pop it loose from there, she'll slide it up. Out. She'll come out. I'm almost embarrassed to know that I, was a, I had a Britney Spears lyric in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Shake it loose. Well, if that's all the bolts, then we ought to be uh, loose, loosey goosey. Loosey goosey. May have to get a uh, a bar. bar. Yeah, that's a good one there. Unless we miss some bolts somewhere. All right, uh, any particular just, spot? Just anywhere we can ease on it and see if we got it to shake loose. Is that a decent spot right there? Yeah. I think you do got one. Let's see. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming out. It's coming out? Yeah. I don't want to bust that hose right here. It's moving. It's definitely moving. Yeah, it's separated. A lot of weight. Yeah, it's coming. Let's see. It's almost this will almost fit in that gap. Look at you, big man. Let me take a little more tension. Got it? That thing's where we got, well, we got the boom standing out there on the end, but once we get it out of there, it'll. Uh, let me uh, take a little tension off. All right, here she comes. I mean, I don't know how far out. I can see the flywheel. She's coming. She's a. Uh, may have to get on the other side there and move a little bit. Right. 
acts like it's that thing should fall away from there. Yeah, solid on this side. Hmm. There shouldn't be nothing there that's got it. It should be all. Should slip right off of the. Uh, Raise it up some, or? Well, we can try that. I don't think there's okay. nothing else that's... Yeah. Okay, we're back in here. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, just hold her, hold her down. Yeah, that loosen this side up some. Yeah, it's, it's just had tension on it. There it's loose go. now. There we go. It's loose now. Let's see if we can pull pull out Let with it. it. Yeah. Right. Oh nope. <laughs> there we go. She's free. She's free. She's free at last. Did I wear my, no, I didn't even wear my steel toes. I'm coming back with steel toes next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just let her, let her hang. There's your John Deere 4276. And there is the, that's what it, see it's got that uh, torque converter mm. in there. That's what we're coming off of. What's the, uh, it almost looks like like some type of ash or something. What is that? I don't know what that is. You pushing something of firepower? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I wouldn't doubt it being in because he had several trash piles out there. Yeah. But uh, we want to replace the uh, seal in the back while we got it out. That's right. And uh, we need to take the. See how that piston's washed? These were all burning good. All right. This one here is the one that... Well now what we need to do, we already got the oil out of the oil pan. So now we need to zip the, the uh, oil pan off. And figure out if we can take that rod loose and get it Pull that piston out of there. Slide the boom back, yeah, yeah, and right then right. re-pick it back up again, yeah. and it'll be sitting there without. Yeah, put a, uh, you're just gonna set it on the floor. Well, I look for a four by four or something. Well, we're just gonna pick it right back up okay. again once we slide the boom. So I don't think it'll hurt just to ease it down. And I had a tire. And I usually set it down. Man. On. This loose in the boom, we'll just slide that forward to it. Oops. Uh, where is my. What size is it, Jeff? Three quarter. I got it right. <sighs> Dave, let's. Uh, Try to, to uh, push your... <laughs> I may have to loosen it up some more, get the tension on. Uh, 
me and Hank will hold the motor up if you'll Put it back down some more. Yeah. Yeah, just loosen the tension on it. There you go. Now now we can slide it. That's right. There to go now. We're getting tension on it again, I think. Just ease it on down. There you go. Come on up with it. We want it back on the crane more. Okay, that's good now. Now pick it up. Well, I can't imagine the time it took to take the blade off of it and stuff. My goodness. You know, it's really not that bad. Is it not? All you got to do pins. is just pull your two bolts on each side, undo your hoses, which comes out that right, tube for the blade, Yeah. and walk away from it. Really? That's it. How many hours on this on this motor? I don't really know. You think the hour meter works? I don't know if it does or not. Most of them don't work. <laughs> yeah. The wires have been took loose. The, I think it's got 37,000 hours on it, just by looking at it. Because every time I diagnose these, they're in the 30,000 hour range. Yeah. It's got a few hours on it, I imagine. <laughs> imagine. Oh my God. So somebody's going to leave a comment, Bill. Like, that guy had no idea what he's talking about. There's, no, there's not 30,000 hours on that machine. Some people don't get my humor, Jeff. <laughs> oh, Lordy, Lordy. That's good, Dave. That's good. Now she'll sit there on her own. This, if you had a leaf in the back, this might be one of the reasons why that bolt was halfway out. I, th I think there was one that we did. Oh, okay. Right, that was it. That was it. <laughs> These two are the ones that we had to pull the motor for because you couldn't get in there. Yeah, yeah. Two of them. The ones on the corners, you could, you could actually move. Uh, you mean get my impact? I mean, make it quicker. All right, do y'all have impact? Though? Yeah, we got air impact, so oh, we don't yeah. have a electric. If the air's not going to bother with the I, noise. I get you. That's 9 sixteenths. If it's, it may be, I think that's what it is. Nine it is. Things. You know, that, that motor really don't look that big when it's out of the track. Once you get past all the dirt, it goes pretty quick. Yeah, we was going. I'll come back to that one. I need an extension. You need extension? Yeah. And not on David, you want to rip us down that side, but the front will need just because the chuck of the the black button. Oh, right here. Feels <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you hit it with like your thumb. There I got one more on my side, I didn't get back there. This one. Wow. <laughs> That's when I loosen my horn. Oh, okay. <laughs> we try to figure out if we can actually get the oil pan out without 
Well, that's what we was trying to do was pull the pan out without pulling the motor and just work it in, you know, inner frame. Ain't that crazy that you got to pull the motor to get the oil pan off? Yeah, I, I, that's what I was telling him. I said, man, they could have made it simpler. I mean, we could have, you know, went through the problem of, of taking the crossbar off on each side and then jacking up the tractor. And But we also found out that it had a, Looks like the motor oil was going into the bell housing. Sensor for sure. And so we decided to just go ahead and yeah, go ahead and yeah. replace it while we was into it. Of course, it looks like now, since I'm seeing it, it looks like the oil was coming from the back of the head and running into the bell housing. This is too thick. So you need a shallow? I mean, a yeah. skinner yeah. wall? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. That's gonna be a dude right there. You gonna set it back down and leave it on the floor and then raise it? I mean, what's the process? I've never taken off all. Well, once we get that oil pan knocked. Right? Uh, we'll get it down, set it down, and then we'll turn the the piston right. that we're going to take off. Yeah. All the way. Had that had that cross thread Loctite on it. All out. Okay. It's what? Okay. That's a cast iron pan. I don't have some weight to it. No doubt. Can I get it closer to the ground? It probably wouldn't hurt because that's going to be a most of them are made of, of tin, pressed tin, but that's this right. one's cast iron. Scared me. Yeah. That's the safety locks in there? <laughs> Wish. <laughs> Come on down just a little bit more, Danny. All right, that's good right there. Now we bump her loose a little. That's it. Now we can pick her back up. For a minute, David, let's turn this piston up or down. We need to get it to go down, I think, to get to the bolts on the bottom. Ooh, watch, watch, watch your fingers. I had 50 50 chance of seeing which way that was going the right way. Let's see. Now it's coming up. If you will, David, get right there and look and see where the, the cap is with the bolts, we can get to them. Keep going. Which way? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's the right way. Yeah. I'm coming down. Alright, stop my mess. Can you get the bolts? Yeah. Alright, now when we take that off, we got to be real easy because we don't want to score the, scratch the bearings up on the cap or the, the rod because we're going to take and find us a piece of wood and we're going to knock that piston out through the top once we get it undone. Do you have the new part already? No, we just wait to see what's wrong. Oh, yeah. So we'll know what to do, what okay. to buy. Okay. Okay, what kind of bolts, wrenches you need to get under there with? Well, it's gonna be definitely a 12 point socket. 12 point? Yeah. What size? Five eighths, I think. You sure it's five eighths? And that's on five the rock. We can't pull this on up a little more so we can see what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What's supposed to get torqued to, you reckon? I hadn't looked in the book to find yeah. out, but, but there's there probably going to Oh, right? yeah, there's a yeah. torque spec for, yeah. you know, the heads. Uh, just about everything on here has got a torque spec. Right. Really don't look that. <laughs> yeah, don't uh, look that way. Yeah. yeah. The rest of the motor looks pretty good. So these are these are counterweights. Okay. If those are out of balance by a little bit, that motor will shake. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. I had a D4 one time, somebody didn't tie me. That thing went to shaking and wound up uh, cracking the oh crankshaft into oh, wow. yeah. We had to replace it. Yep, that one. You need a light under there? That light plugged in. Not my light wasn't even plugged in here. See if that impact he's got one. They got is it a half inch drum? It's three eighths. You got, a, you got a three eighths? There's, there's a there's a half in there. All right, I got an adapter. Will that work? David, take that oil pan right yeah. there. It's right in your way in. Yeah, put it. Put it right around in there. Oh. Uh, we're Here's the socket here. Need to turn that anymore? Can I reach that? I think you can get it. Let's right, see if we can get that with your hand, Dad. I'll, but not all of it. Okay. Yeah, now, yeah. watch, look at the Baron. See the Baron is. Baron looks good. Yeah, Baron looks in good shape. It's in good shape. Good. I'll put it over there so we can't get it. Uh, now we need to push that rod up. I'm going to set this Baron on this. Yeah. Now watch that rod because it's going to come loose from your. Okay. And we don't want it to jam or, or get into your bearing. Uh, hmm. Try and turn 
it and easy. Easy. <laughs> Alright, hope. Now turn your go ahead and turn your shaft because piston's gonna stay as long as we got it off that. So back down? Yeah, turn it away from the who oh, it's gonna pull it. We're gonna have to knock it loose. We need a piece, a short piece of wood or something to get up in there and see if you can get that to tap that off that. We may have to turn the crank to a different position to, uh, we want to get the crank loose from the cap. Bump one, one corner of it, one side. We need to turn it to a different position so you can knock it loose. There you go. There you go. Watch your fingers. There you go. I got it. Now, can you get to it, David, with the crank being out of the way? Yeah. There's your rings. There you go. All right, I can probably pull it from here. Today. Yeah, you can get it from there. Well, they're not stuck. So we'll look at the. <laughs> not broke, not stuck. Now, did you know it was the blow by from that cylinder because you pulled some stuff or? We took off the uh, manifold, mm -hmm. the exhaust manifold. Yeah. And right. oil was in that cylinder. cylinder. All right. So, now we need to look and see if the cylinder wall is scored. Let me set it down a little bit. Yeah, we need to bring it down some. Ready? Yeah. Same way in. Okay. Is that normal? Well, it's been open here for a few weeks, so. Oh, okay. It may have done. Yeah. I really don't see nothing on this side where yeah. it scored bad. Or... Do do sil do sleeves have what do they call it cross hatching or something like that? What is that? It's where they uh, hone the, the uh, okay. cylinder. Yeah. Uh, they'll hone it and, and give it uh, marks. Gotcha. And you want to do that when you put in new rings or anything for the marine will seat. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, unless it's just plain war, I don't really. You see anything scratched or scored on that side, this side over here? I don't see anything that would cause it to. Uh, I don't need a gas bag. Maybe. Other than it's just being more. I see right down at the bottom. You see right here on this one side or that side? You see where the groove is? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's just where. Because you can feel it on both sides. I actually thought it was the bottom of the sleeve, but I guess the well, sleeve is the that's, whole way. 
that's where the piston stops at. Gotcha. And it's got, you know, when you got wear in something where it stops and comes back. Right. Because it should be smooth all the way down. Gotcha. And it's, uh, it must be just war. Just war. Uh, those don't feel. Not really that bad. The only other thing I know would be... Uh, right. Actually, let go back in there. Dave, you see that right there? See that scratch, right? See that scratch? Right there on the right. tip of that mm -hmm. knife. See it? Mm -hmm. Or is that a I hair? Think, I think it's a hair. Oh. <laughs> is it? No, it's still there. Do it again, Dave. Uh, pull that lighter. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's it was... It was. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was a scratch. <laughs> yeah, it's just off that rag, probably. I was trying to see if there's any. <laughs> I was looking to find something, but mm -hmm. I. Yeah, especially after taking a motor out, huh? Well, it definitely is doing something. I mean, rings could be war. We're past their point. Which those oil rings look like they all wore a pretty good bit. And they're they're you see how flat they are? Mm-hmm. Here. I've got a new set of rings that we can look at to come out of the 450. Um, after I drop everything in here. And nice to be inside the shop when there's rain in it. Bearings. It probably, and and what I would rather do since that block has has been, had a hole in it. I mean, it's got good oil pressure. It's uh, it was running good. The only thing issue we had was the blow by in it, and I think there was a hole in the manifold, and it was a cold day. We were out using it. And it was doing fine to start with, and then all of a sudden, I don't know, what, about an hour or two later? Yeah. It started to skip. Mm. And that hole being in that manifold up there close to the head like it was, I think it was drawing in cold air, and I think it may have burnt the valve. Mm. And that's another reason why we tore it down. And... But I would love to have another block. I tried to buy a short block or a long block to go back in here. And the people I was talking to said they couldn't find it. Mm. And I know Wiley said that he had a couple over toward Mississippi or somewhere. But I was hoping to try to find something closer by. Yeah, yeah. And for a reasonable price. Right. But, if, but if I had a good block, I'd just take that one and just totally rebuild it. New right. sleeves, new, you know, everything. Yeah. But I'm a little airy. I mean, I, if I've got no other choice, I'm going to rebuild that one. But, you know, I, I just don't like that hole being <laughs> in there. <laughs> I mean, Frankenstein may, you know, live on, but, uh, but the thing to do now, since I'm seeing what I'm seeing, it would be to rebuild the whole thing. Just go ahead and put new sleeves, pistons, and uh, have everything checked. Uh, 
instead of just doing the one. I, I thought that that the rings may have been broke or stuck or because I was only that one cylinder yeah. having the issue. But since it's not visible, I mean even the piston's not No, it looks good, don't it? You know, it's it's got a well it's got some here. But the ring should have you know as long as the cylinder don't have them, you know, it was but that's not enough to, to cause what it was doing. Interesting. I think just the rings are just wore out because that should have a higher uh, sides on it from where that middle is. Yeah. And that's your oil ring. And that could be letting the oil come by you. Your other rings here and causing that, that blow by. Getting oil up through there, and if that's the case, the other one probably ain't gonna be far behind. That's right. Well, I mean, you know, you hear people say it all the time. You got it this far, you might as well, yeah, do it. You know. Well, I, I have took a D4 that I, I brought in here, and somebody had broke a valve in it, and I took it down in the frame and pulled out one sleeve, that one piston and put it back together after I had the head refixed. And man, it ran like a, a brand new motor. Never had the first issue with it. So there's some things you can get by with and some you can't. But you see something like this right here, then, then you may want to go ahead and redo the whole thing. Yeah. If, if that's the issue of the rings being off. I'm gonna do some further investigating on the block to find out if it's, you know, this is, you know, worth doing. I mean, like I said, it was holding good oil pressure, and we didn't have problems with oil pressure. Uh, and that motor was actually running good until that day. And I, I, I yet have had the head. Um, it's on the table. Yeah. They had the head uh, checked to see if it's got a burnt down. Yeah, let's in. take a look at the head. Uh, let's see. This was the you know, this is the one that was blowing the oil through here. But One of these. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could have been sucking there. There's the burnt valve right there. That's it. That's yep. it right there. Yeah. There's your burnt valve. There's your problem, lady. And that was probably cause of that cold air being sucked in there. Mm -hmm. An engine, they'll tell you, if you're, if you got cold air going in on the engine like that, it will burn a valve. Yeah. And it was running fine up until, and it was like I said, a cold day that day. And, uh, it ain't a race car, is it? Nope. <laughs> but if I can get the head redone, get my cylinders all redone, I think it would, it'll do to go back in there and run it. Uh, if anybody has a 276 engine block around here that they would love to get rid of, yeah, I, yeah. I'd like to get it. Yeah. Yeah, let me know. Just leave a comment below uh, if you if you got a, a 276. It's in the, the block, mm -hmm. and we'll uh, we'll make arrangements to to get it from you somehow, some way. And then we'll have us a good, strong running antique dozer. Antique, rare antique, super rare, super rare antique <laughs> dozer set 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, we got others to uh, work on too, and if I can get this one out of the shop, another one's coming in. That's right. Yeah. So this is a 550, but there's a uh, there's some differences between like the, the series, right? Right. So what 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 exactly do you, do you look for? Or what's the differences in the? Well, every every uh, letter, like B, 
to C, right. to E. That's where John Deere changed something about the dozer. Okay. Now, when it goes from a B to a C, the, the B has the dry steering clutches in it. Okay. The C model is where they went with the wet steering clutches. Sure. And the, the power steering is built inside the transmission. Uh, the E model tractor, or they started actually with a D, which they only made very few of those. Okay. And then they went right into the E. All right. The E model tractor is where this one here, about the same year, they uh, done the walkthrough cab, got out of the step over end cab. Okay. And, and that's where they changed the tractor to a, a walk in cab. Same transmission and all as the C. All right. And uh, that's when they raised the nose on it and squared them up a little more. When did they go to like uh, joystick control and all that stuff? That was later on in the 90s? That's later on, yeah. yeah. Uh, they had, they, they'd done the foot steering control in the 80s okay. with the G model tractor. The G model, yeah. I mean, that's the one where they completely rearranged the whole tractor and squared it up, yeah. got it taller, bigger. Yeah. They, they came out of the compact. These are called compact dozers. Okay. Because they're so tight, so sure. small, narrow. Well, when the, the E model or the G model tractor came along, they totally redid it. Squared the, the nose, the squared the body up on it, the boxes, the whole nine yards, made a walkthrough cab, and the transmission rolls out the back. Oh, nice. You take the big plate off the back, uh, you take out your, your uh, pinions on your bull gears, and uh, undo a few lines on the inside and it's on rollers and uh, uh, two tubes and you just roll it right out the oh, back, okay. take it out, redo it, put it back in. Yeah. These here tractors, you've got to pull the motor, uh, go into it, we've got to pull the dash, uh, and then you can go in and rebuild your transmission. Yeah. Uh, John Deere made it a whole lot simpler. Yeah, yeah. Well, they kept breaking down so they needed them for well, the guys to be able to work on it, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but the uh, uh, so what's what's the differences between 455, 50, 650? Is it horsepower? Is it weight? Is horsepower? It uh, there's horsepower difference um, because because uh, a, a 276 is it is is it just tuned to make more horsepower? Is that how it is? Yeah. Uh, well, the the pistons are bigger. Oh, okay. The, they go with pi uh, bigger pistons. Uh, gotcha. They turn them up. Because you can still use the same block, just put a dip, bigger piston in it. Is that what you're saying? Not from a 450. Oh, there, okay. There's difference in the way the blocks hook up to your bell housing. Oh, okay. So, I'm, I'm tracking now. All right. Now, that's where the E model on the 450 comes in. Okay. Now, it will interchange because I've already checked on that. Yeah. But that's where they structured the E and the 550. Yeah. Uh, the same. They started building them the same at that point. Mm. And then, like I said, they, you know, the G versions, all the 550s, the 650s, the, you know, they were all looking the same tractor. Gotcha. And, um, but now the undercarriage on a 450 and the 550 is the same undercarriage. Interesting. I can take it one and put it on the other. Yeah, yeah. But when you go up to the 650, uh, tractor is when they went bigger. Gotcha. With yeah. the, you know, more links on the chain, more the sprockets bigger, the sure. islands are bigger. Sure. Interesting. Uh, yeah, but, that that stuff's cool, man, and it's uh, and when you start getting into like the mechanical engines and the and the and the mechanical drives versus all the sensors and all that garbage, that just it makes it so much well easier to work on. Yeah. And just you know, it's just awesome actually. Well, when they started computerizing it and doing the death fluid and the stuff like that, you know, you got you add the cost, and, oh, yeah, and yeah. then it also breaks down because of the sensors and the yeah. Uh, but I like the newer style tractors for the you know they done away with the what they call the transmission, okay, and they went with the pumps, uh, hydrostats, okay. 
and the hydrostat is where you get the joystick mm -hmm. steering yeah. it, and it operates kind of the same way that an excavator does all right you know it, they got walking motors the the dozers have walking motors gotcha and uh, i like that about it that makes the tractor a lot easier to operate sure because you got your hands on on your motion plus you keep it on your blade and yeah yeah you can operate a lot better but what i was going to say a while ago is that they have foot steering when they come with the g model tractor is when okay. they come out with foot steering which also frees your hands up that's right yeah, to, yeah. to run a tractor yeah yeah and uh but every time they change the letter on one like your h your j they change something about the tractor yeah sure. it may be a slight change it may yeah. be a major change it, yeah uh, I like John Deere. John Deere's easier to work on. Let me ask you this. So, would you buy a first gen of something, or do you wait till certain iterations come out before you, you know what I mean? Like if, like if a brand new model came out today, would you wait for it to have a, like a, a B or C model before you buy it so they can work the bugs out, or do you think they're far enough along in their building process that, that that's not a factor anymore would i like to have a new tractor uh, yes yeah. I, I would like to have and that's another thing with these old tractors and the new tractors uh, you can be operating a brand new tractor out on the field and something still may go wrong sure i mean the old tractors you know you commonly gonna break down some right. way somehow <laughs> sure but all of them still has to be worked on yeah, even yeah. though you got warranty with the new ones yeah yeah uh yeah. they're 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 not break proof that's right yeah yeah uh my brother was a good deal on that they were running the cat out there when they was cleaning up the property below the interstate and uh, they bought this high track cat yeah. well you know i think the first day or two they had problems with one of the filters leaking and oh, gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. then he ran it another week or so and then a limb uh -oh. got in the track uh, yeah. got into the back back there and just tore out the wires Ugh. so Ugh. breakdowns no matter what age right. machine are going to be coming yeah. yeah that's right so um, well listen jeff's got a ton of of knowledge about these old machines and stuff and uh we're we're glad that we can come over here and just kind of spend some time with them and stuff. Y'all, if you haven't seen the video where me and Jeff go, um, we attempt to crank a, a 450, uh, B. A, what was it? B. A B model. It has some fuel issues, but we got it running on ether. Yeah, we uh, did. But uh, go check that video out. And uh, you guys take care. God bless you. And we'll see you on the next one.